What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Mazarin or Mazarin, not sure exactly how to pronounce that, Nimrod. This is an awesome knife, one that was generously donated to my channel by Shaker MT or uh, Harry as uh, I know him. Really, really awesome guy, very generous patron, actually donated the lighting that is finally illuminating the set of my channel. If you've been around for a while, then you know I have been dealing with subpar lighting for a very long time. At almost 5,000 subs in a year and however long into this, you'd think that I'd, I would have caught up by, you know, a lot faster than that, but it, it took me a while. So uh, Harry stepped in and, and uh, got this lighting for me and uh, it's just, it's awesome. It's substantially better. Um, still tweaking it, still gonna make it exactly what I want it to be, but for right now, I think it's working just fine. Uh, everything looks great um, from my point of view. If you are new to my channel, I like to do knife reviews, knife overviews, unboxings, discussion videos, a um, whole bunch of stuff surrounding knife-related content, and I upload daily. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss the next upload. Also, we're currently at 54 patrons, which means we are only six patrons away from the giveaway that I'll be uh, doing for this beautiful ProTec Mastrop Mordax in 20 CV. That giveaway will be available for everybody. So if you'd like to support me and help me reach that goal, you can follow the link in the description, have a look around, and you can join any tier account. You also don't have to do that at all. You can just subscribe and turn notifications on and just be ready for when that day comes. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this guy here. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement on it real quick. Overall length of the Nimrod coming in at... About 8.75, maybe 8.6, if you don't count that little nubby back here. From tip to scale, you're looking at about 3.65 inches, maybe 3.7 inches. The actual cutting edge is coming in at just over three and a quarter, maybe 3.3 inches overall. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. I'm gonna move this down just a smidge up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Hera 3. Hera 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. So you can see here that this is a full size knife. Not a massive knife, but really the best size comparison is about right here. Um, now, actually, probably closer to the size of the uh, Rat uh, 1. In fact, yeah, it looks to be almost exactly the same size. Let's go ahead and measure that one more time. Make sure that I'm getting that correct there. 8.7. Yeah, we're, I'm going to call that 8.75 inches overall, probably. I think the end of this was, yeah. I like how to pull it a little bit too far out. That happens sometimes. Better to just go back and measure it and be sure. 8.6 inches on the rat, 8.75 inches on the Nimrod. Uh, I'll give you guys an example of the action here. So this is a lockback. Um, though, I mean, it, I, I don't want to call it smooth, but I, it's hard to call any lockback smooth. I guess for a lockback, it operates flawlessly with no additional friction for any other lockbacks that I've experienced um, in this price range. Um, you do have to shake it quite a bit, and I'm a little nervous about that given where the blade would come down. As it comes down right here, you have to be a little bit cognizant, and you really have to be up close right here, otherwise it's coming down on your finger. You really have to be right there, which isn't super comfortable given how far back you have to do that, but it's totally doable. Also, because of the position of that hole, you can every now and then kind of get a flick with it. You have to give it a little bit of wrist. You can also kind of do it with your thumb there. Not really a super incredibly flicky knife, but it'll work. Let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick. Overall weight on the Nimrod. Coming in at 4.8 ounces. Not bad for the size of knife that it is. 4.83 ounces. It's important to keep in mind that there are actually three versions of this that I am aware of. There's this carbon fiber version, and then there's also a black G10 version, and there's also a micarta version in what looks like uh, like burlap or I, I don't know, that really like light brown. It's like, um, it's like this color, this QSP box. 
That's about the color that it comes in. Um, we'll go over the different variants here in a sec. Let's go over the anatomy of the knife. What we have here is a beautifully stonewashed drop point blade. Um, there is a flat, it only runs out to about here and the rest of it is just tapering towards the tip or a straight drop down to the cutting edge. Uh, spine thickness, let's go ahead and measure that here real quick. Always fumbling around with this. There we go, on. Probably the on button, right? That's generally the one that you wanna use. Okay, we're zeroed out. Spine thickness coming in at about 130 thousandths. That seems to be uh, pretty accurate there. So the taper down to the cutting edge, it's got quite a ways to blow, go, <laughs> quite a ways to blow, quite a ways to go. You can see there the taper is actually taller than that of the Doug Ritter. The Doug Ritter coming in at about 125, 130 thousandths itself. So you can see there, it gets nice and thin down here by the cutting edge. Really, really a nice uh, performance feeling blade shape. Um, Really, I mean, the blade all the way around is, is ground really, really well. Um, the edges on everything are nice and smooth. Even inside this hole, nothing is really sharp or anything like that. And it just feels like a performance-oriented blade. There's no choil, but you've got plenty of blade and you've got plenty of room on the handle there. I don't necessarily think you need it. You have plenty of functional jimping up here. Lots of room to put your thumb, you know, either backwards or forward and, or get it in the exact uh, uh, grip position that you want it in. Really, really nice blade. I have no no complaints. There's even a sharpening choil. Really nice. I don't know how I feel about all of this. Mazarin Italy stainless steel M390. By the way, it's M390. That's pretty awesome. And then it says Nimrod Design T Rumici. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's not that big and flashing in your face, but there's a lot. It seems like there's a lot of text. Um, that's okay, not that big of a deal. On this particular variant, we do have carbon fiber scales and they do look beautiful. This light kind of making them dance around. Of course, this is sort of, I don't know if we call this partially direct lighting or partially indirect lighting. Um, the light's really gonna make it dance around. You know, it depends on where you are, if you're outside or inside, but uh, the carbon fiber to me looks really, really nice. All of the edges of the scales are nicely rounded off. There's no sharp points or anything like that. You have a generic Torx head pivot, you can see there. Uh, really easy to make adjustments. And then unfortunately we have this itty bitty little teeny tiny size Torx head that I hate and I always talk about. Just make those bigger. I hate those, they're so easy to strip out and especially in the case of this knife with it being a knife that's made in Italy, getting extra parts or sending in for stuff like that, it just, it, it elongates the entire process and it's not really something I'd wanna mess with. Yeah, you can probably find your own screws but you know, if you're like me, you like everything to match and you like the screws that, you know, are on your knife to be the screws that it came with or at least made by the person who made your knife. So it's it's just frustrating. I just don't like that little teeny tiny size. And I feel like almost everybody's little tiny Torx head driver that's that size is just chewed up from just the, the prongs not being strong enough to support it while, while you torque on it. Anyways, not that big of a deal. Um, just wanted to point that out there. You do have a little lanyard hole back here that will, uh, you know, you can squeeze some 550 through back there. Uh, the seams on the lockback are, are pretty good. There's a couple of areas where it sticks up just a little bit more so as it sort of rises towards the blade. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but there's a little bit of a lip there, something to point out. It doesn't look like there's really any hideous gaps or anything, but that's just, you know, a lot of times this part is, is flush when it's, uh, when it's locked out and it only raises up when it's is you know about to be locked out So it's just something I wanted to point out. There's jimping back here. It's definitely gonna catch your hands It's gonna eat your fingers a little bit if you are, are not wearing gloves But if you're wearing gloves, which I think this knife was really more so designed for this the, to me This seems like a hard use or outside type of knife. Uh, it's not gonna bother you as, as, as much if you're wearing gloves back here the uh, backspace or, or or you know what's left over behind the back lock is flush but there's a couple of little little tiny gaps. Not that big of a deal. It's just something to point out over some other lockbacks that I've seen. Um, the pocket clip uh, setup is one that it should. It looks like should be able to be changed from right from the right to the left side. So if you want to carry it um, right or left tip up, you should be able to do that given that um, lockbacks are fully ambidextrous. It is truly a, um, a full right or left-handed uh, carry knife. 
I do not like this pocket clip. It carries deep um, and there's a divot and that's nice, but this part sticks up entirely too far. It will undoubtedly get caught on something and get and get sort of peeled up. I think the end of this pocket clip just needs to be much closer to the uh, to the knife itself, and it needs to be a lot less pointy at the end. I absolutely feel that in my palm. While um, you know, hotspot pocket clips aren't the you know they're not necessarily deal breakers even when they're present. It's something I want to point out to people. If you're just going to pull this knife out and make a quick cut, pocket clips probably not going to bother you. But it's you still run the risk of it catching on something and breaking off easier than uh, another pocket uh, another pocket clip. You can see here like the MSG D carry clip on the Spyderco. It's just a lot less likely to get caught on something. You know something to get underneath that and grab it. There's a lot. I mean a lot more leverage can be created in a pocket clip like that. Plus it's thinner. And in my opinion, it's just, I mean, when it's, it looks to be a weaker clip, so it, it's something that I worry about. Now, especially if you're gonna be using this knife and cutting, you know, for 30 minutes at a time and heavy pressure cuts, um, you know, especially if you're not wearing gloves, you're definitely gonna feel that. So something to point out there. Um, fit and finish on this knife all the way around is pretty good, aside from the, just a couple of little tiny issues with the backspacer. Um, the centering is absolutely perfect and it absolutely does lock out perfectly. Um, no blade play up, up, down, left, or right. Um, we are running on phosphor bronze here. Um, truthfully, this knife feels very tough and it's nice and thin in here. So it's one of those knives that looks a lot bigger than it feels. When I pick it up, I mean, it, it looks like it's going to be chunky and sort of cumbersome and I pick it up and it's lighter than it looks. A lot of times that's kind of a turnoff to me, but in this case, this a knife that actually looks more cumbersome than it is, cumbersome in it, meaning in, in, in a negative way, um, it, it's nice actually, it's refreshing to pick it up and go, oh, that's not bad at all, I actually could use that. In fact, I wouldn't have reservations against using this hard outside at all. Um, as far as I know, the G10 versions and the uh, Micarta versions are all in M390, all of them are in M390, um, and I think most people are gonna be just fine. I don't know that M390 is absolutely the best deal for outdoor hard use situations, but heavy quotes on that because not everybody's usage habits are the exact same thing. If you're gonna go outside and you're really gonna to go to town on this on some wood, some cardboard, some rope, some rubber, things like that, and you're really gonna be putting a lot of pressure into that blade, and maybe you're gonna be kind of torquing around a little bit, a lockback setup and a blade ground in, in this way and in with this, you know, the, the overall geometry and the blade thickness, I think the whole knife is just appropriate for outdoor use. It also really doesn't carry all that bad. I mean, honestly, I mean, even as a, a knife that I was going to carry around in my office, it carries nice and deep and it doesn't feel overly cumbersome in the pocket. The only thing that I don't like is the position of that pocket clip. It actually sticks out quite a ways from my pants. So anytime I put my hand on there, I feel this prong sticking out and it really, it really gives me the impression that it's going to catch on something. That is the biggest negative on this knife. Um, all the way around though, I, I think it's a pretty good knife. Um, it's made in Italy. This particular version is in carbon fiber and runs $200. I don't think that's a bad price for what you're looking at here. If um, the M390 is not your thing, you can go with G10, which is curiously only $5 less on Blade HQ. That doesn't really make sense to me. And then the Micarta version, which honestly I think is probably the best deal, is $175. bucks. m M390, Micarta, uh, and a lockback in, in a design that uh, accentuates uh, more outdoorsy type of tasks. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a bad price at all. You know, if you really, really like carbon fiber, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's a lot of M390 and carbon fiber knives out there that are easily over $200, even in the production range. So I can't complain too much about that price. If it were me, I would go with my Carter version. My suggestions, um, I guess, uh, to improve this knife, number one, the G10 version should also be 175 bucks. I only looked at Blade HQ and unless I'm missing something, they, they just want like $25 more or $20 more for the G10 version. I, I just don't understand that. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Somebody can point me out in the comments section. But the G10 version should be $175. Um, and then I, I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it. Um, but uh, if I was going to recommend one version of this knife, I think I... I particularly would go with that um, micarta. I think that um, the micarta version looks like it's going to provide a little bit more grip, um, and that combined with how the blade is made and just the overall functionality of this knife, I think this would make an excellent outdoor knife. Um, the fact that it's also on phosphor bronze really helps out there, um, keeping dirt and debris and things like that out of the pivot. I think that's great. If you're looking for fidget factor, you're not going to find it here. Um, the pocket clip is a bummer, and those little teeny tiny screws are a bummer, but that's really all that I can complain about. This is, a, this is a pretty good knife. You know, it's not my favorite knife in the whole world, but if this was the only thing I had to do a full day's work of like heavy cutting tests, 
yeah, I'd be totally fine with this. This isn't uh, this isn't bad at all. And I really like the blade shape, and I really like that stone wash uh, on the blade. You guys know I'm um, partial to stone wash like uh, stone washes like that. Um, I think that's pretty much going to be everything that I can say. Um, this knife will be a giveaway knife at some point. Um, we're going to get through the the giveaway that I'm uh, currently climbing at right now. And uh, remember, it's Mass Drop Mordax. Once we hit 60, be opening up the giveaway there. We're at 54. So if you'd like to help out, help me reach that goal, you can join my Patreon uh, any tier, and uh, we'll be one closer to reaching that goal. Anyways, guys, um, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it mildly entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to take a look at my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.